Hi ladies, I am Shannon Mitchell, a Black millennial business owner, the founder of Shalo Glow LLC, an all-natural skincare company that helps you glow from head to toe. I am a champion for your daily self-care, business care, and intentional wellness. Hey y'all, I'm Christine Gotro, a white social justice advocate, an international speaker, coach, published author, and dancing social worker who helps you upgrade yourself and community care. Together, we are Women Connected in Wisdom, a podcast grounded in the eight dimensions of wellness. And we like to get together every week for intentional conversations between us and special guests about how to be wise in business, relationships, and wellness. How do we do this? How do we do it? How are you doing this week? That may be part, I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. What about you? I'm good. I'm grateful to be here. Episode 122. I'm super excited. (laughs) What? What? Right? Episode 122 is almost as hot as it is in Texas. (laughs) And it's hot. You know, I read it was 130 degrees in Death Valley, California um, this week, right? Mm -hmm. We are having some of the hottest temperatures on record. And the reason I bring up Texas is because that's where I am streaming in from today. And yesterday we were driving through West Texas and it was 107 degrees. Mm. Did you have to do anything different for your hydration or did you just make sure that you had water? Oh, I was hydrating. I was was watering. Sometimes I do coconut water. Sometimes Mm -hmm. I do, you know, and what I really try to do is not what I add, but what I take away. Because, you know, I have a little, I have a little love of caffeine and caffeine is a dehydrator. So really making sure, like I still had my coffee, I still had my Mm -hmm. tea, but I didn't do more than that. Right. Okay. That's good to know because you know, we're getting ready to travel. And um, I did do coconut water when we were at the Mm -hmm. pool for the family reunion. So that makes sense. But I hadn't considered what to take away. I've only been thinking about, let me make sure I add even more hydration. So that's good. Right. It's huge because, you know, I was before I was on this road trip back, I was in Colorado and it's really easy to get dehydrated at high altitude. This time of year, especially when the when the temperatures are up, we all need to be paying attention to it. Yes, yes, yes. So are we ready to kick off this official episode of 122? That's what I was going to say. Absolutely. Right. And this week we're talking about spiritual wellness. So I want to go ahead and give the definition so we can jump right in because I think it's going to be a really good conversation. Our Women Connected in Wisdom definition is spiritual wellness allows us to be in tune with our spiritual selves. This realm of wellness lets us find meaning in life events and define our own individual purpose. It can be defined through various factors, including religious faith, values, ethics, and morals. Regardless of whether you believe in a particular religious faith, there is always something to be learned about how you see yourself in the world. Hmm. You know, I realized as you were reading that definition, it's very fascinating because I love this definition, but I always realized we don't really talk about nature in there. Mm -hmm. When, and a lot of our guests talk about nature us ourselves have part of that practice as part of our spiritual wellness practice. So I was just thinking about that. It was top of mind because day before yesterday or was Mm -hmm. day before yesterday, I was in Caprock Canyon state park in -hmm. Texas and um, had one of the coolest experiences with nature that I've had in a while. They have a free roaming bison herd in Caprock Canyon. And we pulled up and you know how you go to a state park and there's a visitor center and, you know, and we saw this grassy plains and we saw nothing. And I thought, oh, we drove all this way and we're not going to see anything. And I go in and, you know, I meet the ranger and she said, oh, yeah, we got a five mile drive that you can Mm -hmm. drive through the park. And people have been seeing bison all day. So your odds are really good, you know, Mm -hmm. and they have over 300 bison in this park. So we like. It was wild, but what was wild was all the other things we saw in addition. So we saw prairie dogs, we saw tortoise, we saw a blue heron, we Mm. saw dragonflies, Mm. Um, you know, just the, it was, it was very sacred. And then we get out now it was, I think 105 or 107. So there weren't a lot of people around, you know, maybe people had more sense than we did to be out. But we get out, we were in the shade, we had hats on, but I went out to this, it's a canyon, 
right? Yes. And I went out to this canyon and it was silent. Hmm. Except for you heard a little bit of the wind and then you'd hear a buffalo grunt in the distance. <laughs> and then the, and you'd get a whiff above the woo. Yeah. <laughs> But I was just, as I was standing on that canyon, it was one of those moments, right, where you feel connected. You see the water, you feel the sky, you feel the wind on you. Like, it was just, oof. I was thinking about that as you read the definition. Yeah. And when I think about spiritual wellness, for me, it's the, what keeps me anchored Right. And like you said, connected to nature, connected to all of it is the things that you have to deal with that you didn't expect. Right. The heat. You thought that your expectations weren't going to be met. Right. You looked Mm -hmm. and your initial look at the situation said there's nothing here for me. Right. Are we sure we're even at the right place? And then to still get that piece of peace and everything that that moment gave to you, you had to get through a certain number of steps and it it took some things to get there, you know, even with you guys driving together, all that led to Mm -hmm. it. And when I think about purpose and why things happen and being able to stay centered in the middle of everything, it's how in my religion, in my faith, God uses all that stuff to your Mm -hmm. benefit. Yes, these things happen, but you're not by yourself. Right. And you can look into yourself to see how does this make me feel right. The heat, that makes me feel a certain type of way. Am I doing right? What I can in my power at the pool. I didn't have my hat. I needed my hat, right? You got, you ladies had your hat, you had your Mm -hmm. coconut water, you did what you could. And then that experience was able to give you that beautiful gift. And now you have that beautiful memory with your aunt. I love that. Yeah. And I was also watching out for rattlesnakes at the same time. I have to tell you, because, you know, we were in West Texas. (laughs) And that's why I love like your nature information because I forgot about it. I'm thinking about bisons and here's blue herrings and tortoises and possible snakes to consider. I didn't see any in the park, but I'm going to say this one more thing before we pull out our guest. I was driving. I can't remember where I was now, but I was somewhere in West Texas. And no lie, not exaggerating at all. Six foot rattlesnake crossing the road. Like, huge. I was so thankful I was in a car and yeah. not out near it. Like that freaks me out. So what's on your list of things that freak you out? Snakes, what else? Spiders mm-hmm. is on the list for me. Like spiders. Spiders don't freak I me out. We them. saw a tarantula. Like there was a tarantula coming across. It was cool. I it. jumped up of course and started I jumped out and started chasing it and video recording chasing it. it. Al- oh, of course I did because Alex Other would way. want the would want the video. Now I would not do that with a snake. Snakes so are one committed that- mother. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the things we do for our kids. And on the video you hear me saying, Oh, Alex would want me to bring this home. But no, darling, I'm not bringing it home. I'm just taking a video. <laughs> Wow. That's funny. And for me, it's interesting. We've been watching um, actually Obama's special on the national parks, right? And so we talk about- Don't you love his voice as he talks about- Mm -hmm. Great Mm -hmm. narrator. We talk about lead narrators with our audio book, right? And um, what I love about the story is that the snake also had the space to cross the road. You know, you had what you needed to be protected, but in the national park, we're seeing all the different animals being able to thrive and get to where they need to go, you know? Yeah. Oh, and with, like and even with spiritual wellness, and this is my part of my focus this week and asking for what you want. You know, yesterday we were at the farmer's market and I was talking to Pharaoh about what happened to being president, right? How do you go from being president to narrating a special on national parks? And I said, maybe that, you know, we talk about purpose and things that you want to do in life when you're looking at the list of things that you want to get done at whatever the end is that you see for yourself, right? He said, okay, I'm president, but I also love nature and I want to be a narrator. And so I love that the order that he did it, right? So that he can have as many viewers and stuff for his show, right? That's amazing. Because if Obama would have just been a narrator, we would remember him a lot differently. Right? It's yeah. fascinating and now him, to think about that. And Michelle get to do books and tours and and maybe instead of just the presidency and the, the political impact that they had, it's also clearly, it's also this. Well, I think about when you say that, I think about Jimmy Carter, right? Mm-hmm. And um, people can argue his politics all day long and he is a one-term yes. president, mm-hmm. but the amount of impact that he has had for the good for this world mm-hmm. since like what he and Rosalind chose to do 
after their presidency has just changed lives all over the globe. And I will say to folks who aren't local in Atlanta or Georgia, if you ever get the chance, and if you're local and haven't done it yet, um, the Carter Museum in in Atlanta is so worth going and seeing the presidential library and seeing the impact that like one to two, yes, and of course they have a platform. They were president for, you know, but right. I think about that, right? Just the good we can do in the world from wherever we are. I love that, Shannon. Absolutely. I am ready to bring our expert guest up today. Are you? Let's do it. Yes. All right. I will read her bio and we'll pull her up on stage. Diane Hillary is a psychotherapist and mindfulness instructor with more than 15 years experience teaching skills and strategies to empower clients to find freedom from shame and live more compassionate lives. Diane is a teacher of the Mindful Self-Compassion Curriculum and founding director of the Atlanta Center for Self-Compassion. And we are delighted to have her on our show today. Yes. Welcome, yes. Diane. Hi, Diane. I'm so glad to be with you all. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Happy to have you here, especially to talk about self-compassion is huge. You know, when we talk about where we think we're supposed to be in life, where we actually are and how we deal with ourselves. Yes. Self-compassion is my passion. And I know we're talking a little about spiritual wellness today, which is, you know, hand in hand with self-compassion, but um, not my primary focus. But I was hoping I could bring my meditation teacher hat, my self-compassion teacher hat, my psychotherapist hat, but also just kind of show up as a human today and share That's a little bit about my own spiritual journey. Absolutely. Mm. Yes to showing up as a human, Diane. Uh, before right. you get started, I want to, in full transparency, um, tell you, Shannon and I have been on a book deadline recently, and we have been taking deep breaths and reminding ourselves to be compassionate <sighs> with each other and yes. the work and ourselves, because yeah. we generally, we'll talk about it on the show, people will hear us, like we practice it, we practice what we preach, we practice we wellness, we practice self-compassion, but yes. man, when you hit a deadline or you <laughs> hit like, life and caregiving and things like that. Yes. So I just want to put that into the space because I think it may come up as part of our conversation um, mm. because when there's bumps in the road, whether that's with spiritual yeah. wellness or self-compassion, how do we address that sometimes? Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. That is when the rubber, you know, hits the road. I don't even know if that's how the saying goes, but you know I think what it I is. Mean? Yes. When you're in the crunch time. Mm -hmm. That's when you need self-compassion more than ever. And when it's a real challenge. Yes. Well, so I, what I wanted to share about today is my experience from um, my spiritual journey of going from sort of looking outside of myself for the answers, you know, thinking um, like, how can I be the best parent? Let me read all the parenting books. And even in my role as a psychotherapist, people are coming to me, you know, as an as a mental health expert. And um, there's sort of this, you know, um, power differential of like, am I, can I show up in the room as a human? And we're I'm a, you know, supporter of them finding their inner answers. And I think in the past, there was a lot of pressure to say, you know, I have the answers. Let me give you advice to help you fix what you're struggling with. And, um, and feeling, you know, that's not how I want to be, but having some pressure to be that way. So this, this, you know, pull between are the answers outside of me? Are they inside of me is, has been such a big part of my journey. Yes. Especially, I don't know if you all have talked about on the podcast. Have you talked about highly sensitive people? Is that a topic? We know? have. We have had um, folks on and, you know, yes. Cynthia Wenton Henry, who is the co-founder of Interplay, has done yes. a lot of work around highly sensitive people. So we've mentioned it. I don't know that we've done a deep dive into it. So say more about it, Diane. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I identify as a highly sensitive person. And the way that showed up for me as a kid was that I was overwhelmed. Like we would walk into a family party and I would be hiding behind someone's leg or rush off alone. And so there, there was, you know, I had um, the perception that my, my high needs could be frustrating to the adults in my life could feel overwhelming to them. Um, and that my shyness and, you know, there was a joke in my family that I never smiled until I was six. And I think that's a sign of just being in freeze, feeling overwhelmed. So when you have that, you know, very sensitive nervous system, and I think the research it, in the past, I've heard the numbers to be 15 to 20% of folks have that high sensitivity. I think we're moving more, maybe more towards 30 now. 
Um, I would so not be surprised. And especially after the last three years. <laughs> right. Yes. I, I hear from a lot of people that it's getting more intense over the last few years, that their sound sensitivity is getting more intense. Um, so it could be, you know, sensory things like lights and sound and touch. Um, and then also feeling emotions more intensely and just having that, you know, nervous system that's easily knocked out of whack. And so for me, th th what that created for me in childhood was this experience of, you know, I'm not getting it right. Like I can't do the right kind of smile. I can't do the right kind of gratitude. And I, and I sort of, you know, had, had the storyline that has stayed with me until the past few years when I've been able to shake it loose that I'm just a bad person. Like no matter what I, um, you know, I would be like, I would say, you know, to my partner, to my friends, oh my gosh, I totally messed this up. Do you think that makes me a bad person? And they would be like, what are you talking about? Obviously right. not. And I was like, okay, I see what you're saying logically, but it still feels that way. So why is this so persistent? Yes. Um, and so with my spiritual journey, you know, going to like vacation Bible school and things like that as a childhood in childhood and hearing the message of, you know, you're a sinner and, um, and he, and, you know, here's how you can be saved that what that ended up doing for me was just getting plugged into, I'm a bad person. Right. So instead of hearing the, um, the grace and the social justice and the love and the beauty, mm -hmm. I just ended up hearing the, you know, Oh, like this, it is true. I am a, a bad person. And if I follow all these external rules, then I can learn how to be a good person. And that so, makes sense. Yeah. It, and it's confusing because there's such a message of, you know, love and grace. And, um, and I, you know, lived in a Christian community just after I graduated from college. I, we raised our, um, our daughter in that community for her first five years of life. And there was so much beauty there. And yet, um, it, you know, through the trajectory of my, of my spiritual journey, um, really needing to get free from like, there's something outside of myself was such yes. an important, like the, the external authority. It's very um, important. And so, um, so then I, um, just in 2020, I had this experience of being able to, because of the pandemic and circumstances, what you were just saying, Shannon, about like, when you're in the thick of it and you, you know, there's heat and there's all of this, how do you find your inner peace still? Right. Yes. Um, so circumstances that I would look back on and say, okay, there was some magic there, but at the time were pretty complicated and painful. Yes. <laughs> um, brought us to living on Tybee Island with extended family during the pandemic. And so it was like everything was, you know, quiet and still people weren't allowed on the beaches at, at that time. Mm. So I got to watch the sunset every night and, you know, be on quiet beaches and walk along the marsh and talk about, you know, herons and, um, turtles and dolphins. It was wow. really magical and amazing. And so getting this, this chance to feel that connection, feel like, oh, I'm a part of this, you know, and, and there's magic here and there's stillness. Um, just gave me, you know, the, the difference between, um, looking for these, you know, this external authority or these external, um, answers, who are the experts and how can I follow them and sort of earn my worthiness? to this sense of like quiet and stillness. How can I find these answers inside of me? So that's been such an important part of what I've shifted in my work with clients as well is how can I help clients tune into the air, their inner knowing? Have you oh. all heard of, um, were you going to say something, Christine? Go ahead. I, I wanted to ask a question for our listeners. Mm -hmm. um, so say somebody's listening, because this sounds magical in my body, Diane, and I've had some of those experiences, but say somebody is listening and says, okay, how do I even start? How do I start to find that stillness within myself and start to listen to my inner voice? Because, you know, there's a lot of outer voices. There's a lot, we get a lot of information through TV, through the internet, through, through this podcast, through, you know, it's, it, that's the good information y'all. But, you know, <laughs> You know, we are, I can't remember what the current statistic is, but thousands of energy images and thousands of input every day. And yes. so how do we, how do we quiet that and mm -hmm. tap into our own inner sense of knowing? Yes, that is an excellent question. Um, I would say some of the things that helped me were um, create working with my limiting beliefs. So I, self compassion was a huge part of this for me. Once I and I would I think it's a lot about intention. So if we start with I'm setting an intention to listen more to my inner knowing, 
And we just, you know, set that intention and we sort of put it out there. That's a part of my overall, you know, theme here is trusting, is trusting that when we set an intention, we're planting that seed and allowing it to play out. And so when we can, you know, start with that intention and I like to also use um, ritual. So I might, you know, light a can, I might say like, okay, I want to listen more to my inner knowing. Let me look and see what would help me remember that. And so maybe I find a candle and I write, I write intuition with a pencil into the candle or inner knowing. Um, And then I light the candle for, you know, a minute when I wake up in the morning and I just say, may I listen to my inner knowing today? Um, another piece for me is, is working with energy. I think being a high, such a highly sensitive person means that I didn't even know how to listen to my inner knowing because I was just soaking up other people's energy all the time. And so once I started learning about energy hygiene and thinking like, okay, I know how to ground my energy, whether it's with yoga squats or with imagining tree roots coming out through my feet into the ground or having my bare feet in the earth knowing how to ground my energy was an important part of it. And then knowing how to clear my energy. So I love to do, um, do you want me to lead a little energy clearing practice? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Let's do it. So closing your eyes for a moment. And just imagine that you're standing under a waterfall and it's just the right temperature and pressure. And as you take a few deep breaths here, Just imagine the water falling all around you and clearing away anything that you feel ready to release. The water is falling around your head and your neck, your shoulders, and your torso, clearing away and releasing any stuck energy that you're ready to let go of. Letting that water wash down all the way through your whole torso and down into your legs. And just feeling that stuck energy, anything that's ready to be released, draining right out through the bottoms of your feet into the earth who receives and recycles this energy so that we can have more space for what we're calling forward. And coming back whenever you feel ready. So what did you notice? Did you you feel that? I just noticed relaxation in my body as like a, a relaxing of my shoulders, a presencing of what I was carrying and consciously letting it go. I just Mm -hmm. noticed relaxation. Thank you. Yeah. It was surprising for me that I immediately went somewhere like, where is this little cove with this waterfall that I knew where it was, you know? Um, And I usually think of Christine and I, when we talk about letting go of energy, I think about cutting people's expectations, their threads of energy on the front of myself and the back of myself. Mm -hmm. I love the, the thought of, water running and rushing over my body. And then I imagine like, you know, when you're standing in the water and the sand below your feet gets pulled by the current, right? When you said it's receiving it and recycling it, Mm -hmm. it wasn't even touching me anymore. Like the sand took it and now it's in the ocean, you know, and gone to the next person that it can help. And I love that idea of thinking of like energy doesn't disappear. So the earth can transform it. So sometimes I'll specifically send my energy to the trees in my, on my land and that, you know, that it's going to be used for something magical. Once I release it, I don't need to be holding on to it because it has another use out there. I love that. I love that, Diane. Well, I have a um, friend of mine who is an, uh, an elder in the Lumbee tribe. And she very clearly told me uh, that I want to share with our listeners. If you're releasing energy to the trees, make sure it's hardwood trees. That because uh, hardwood trees can handle it much better than softwood trees. So things oh, like yeah. oak trees and um, yeah, I, it was a good no. It was a good noticing and a knowing for me when she taught me that because um, yeah. it's like, well, of course there are different trees that can handle different things. Mm-hmm. Kayla Al says, "Wow, I felt so calm with the energy clearing. I would love that daily." Yes, mm-hmm. yes, me too. And, and so I want to share too, Christine, because I think that 
what you asked is a great question, right? And Diane, I do the same type of thing in the morning. You write, right? You said, if I light this candle in the morning and set my intention, then it's different. For me, when I hear you talking about a highly sensitive person, if I don't take my me time and I'm straight to emails and social media and the news and what, I don't almost even want to go through the list of stuff that makes me feel that way. I feel like it's taking me out the calm energy. I was just at at the beach, right? Mm -hmm. If I do not, I I consider it tuning myself. If I do not set the intention and set the tune for the day and make sure I'm at least in tune, then every other tune that comes is the outside authority that because I did not stake my own, that space is taken up by all this other stuff. So that's huge for me in the the beginning of the day too. Yeah. I've been talking a lot lately about, I planted two gardens this summer and one is a fairy garden that is very fun. And what's a fairy garden? Um, I just, um, added some, you know, magical elements. I put in, um, like a hummingbird steak and, a um, cardinal steak and just sort of invited, you know, more joy, like kind yes. of an, a nod to the nature spirits on the land and, um, and have a little fairy, um, chime hanging above. So just bringing joy and magic into the, yeah. I love that. And what's the other garden that you planted? The other one is just um, different kind of flowers, and I haven't ever been much of a gardener, but as I'm trying to connect with nature more, um, the other reason I planted it is because I've been thinking a lot about um, tending to my internal landscape. So I love what you said, tuning in, like thinking that I'm an instrument, and if I don't tune myself daily, then my instrument is going to be off key and out of whack. Yes. And, and thinking about that, you know, with a garden, I'm going out each day and watering it. I'm checking on the bound the the fencing the boundaries making sure the four legged friends are not able to get mm. into it. Yes. Um, so what inside myself do I need to maybe pull, do some weeding, do right. some um, planting of seeds, right. Right. tending, making sure the the water and the light you know. And that was a huge part with self compassion is is moving from you know I had this feeling like I'm never enough, I'm inadequate, I'm a bad person um, to. Um, you know, what, instead of like, what should I be doing to fix that? Like, what should Mm -hmm. I be doing today? What do other people need from me today? And moving to this question of, you know, what do I need? What, if I look inside myself and I say, okay, there's some pain, you know, there's sadness in here. How can I be with that? And so having specific, a lot of, I have this sort of collection of practices that we do in my morning tune into you meditation. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a group that folks are welcome to you know, check out. It's a daily meditation from 8.30 to 9 on Zoom. Mm. So some of the practices are um, a soften, soothe, allow, which is where we just tune in with, okay, I'm I'm feeling sad. Let me soften into that in my body, allow it to be there and see what kind of soothing it needs. And my sadnesses are going to need a different kind of soothing than yours. And so being able to listen to myself and have that pause, which goes back to your question, Christine, of how do we make that space? You know, it is. needing structure and community to help us, you know, create those pauses in our life so that we can listen in because I was so full of other people's information and images and expertise that I, I didn't even know how to answer the question of what do I need? (laughs) So it's kind of an ongoing journey to figure that out. Yes. I love that. And before we go on, Diane, if people want to join your daily meditation, how do they find that? And we'll put it in our show notes also. Yeah, so the on the Atlanta Center oh. for Self Compassion website, um, which is atlantaselfcompassion dot com, there's a um, under services. You click on that, and it'll it should highlight um, meditation or mindfulness services, and there's um, the tune into you meditation. And people can also find us on social media at Atlanta Self Compassion. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Yes, and when you talk about the authority outside of yourself. I think that's huge. Yes. And and for the viewers, we have this at the bottom scrolling across if you want to grab it to participate from 830 to 9 every day. Um, but I think that's huge, especially for women, right? Because we are told that somebody else is an expert, ask somebody else. And again, coming from childhood, one thing that stood out for me that I've learned from women from our Manifestation Mondays group was asking or telling the child what's going on, right? For example, we had a new grandmother in the group and she's sharing that before we do anything with her body, we're telling her what's going on when we're changing her diaper. And I was like, wow, I hadn't thought about it. You know, Mm -hmm. and we see people just 
do whatever they want with babies and babies cannot necessarily communicate the way we communicate. Right. And that continues. Like you said, you're going into a social situation. There's a party. We're opening the door and Diane, Diane, say hi, say, and it's, wait a minute. What about, what does Diane need in this situation? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it being yeah. okay. I want to be next to my mom today and that's okay. Cause that's where yeah. I'm at, you know? So giving that space, even from a very young age, I was really grateful to hear that. Hey y'all, this is a great place to take a break, take a deep breath and hear from our awesome sponsors that make women connected and wisdom podcast possible. Shannon, we are so grateful that Shayla Glow is the sponsor of the Women Connected in Wisdom podcast. And I wanted to take this moment to ask you, when you think about the people who use Shayla Glow, who are we talking about? Mm, that's a good question. I think about three groups, really. One, the group that's removing hair, right? So whether you're using laser hair removal, waxing, shaving, you got to make sure that you're putting back what you're taking out. The second group, I think about those with dry skin and the problems that that might cause, right? The scars, itching, burning, whatever the situation is, you definitely need all three steps, right? The exfoliation, making sure you're taking the dead skin cells off, the oil, putting in the, the moisture and then the shea butter with the aloe, sealing it, helping you heal those things help both groups, right? And third, for the third group is those with chronic illness. You know, the story is personally from cancer and different diseases that our population is dealing with on a daily basis throughout families as individuals. So I'm thinking about my mom and my grandmother and those around me with the same generational ties, right? And what positive healthy habits we can start to make sure that we're maintaining our wellness, especially because the skin is like the cape, the exterior, the, the shield for your immune system. So with COVID, we have to be intentional about covering ourselves. And those are the groups I think about. I love it. And you know what else I love about your product? It's all natural, handmade, yes. and it smells great, y'all. So yes, yay. Tested. <laughs> yes, <laughs> esthetician tested and approved. Yes. Yes. What about you? When you think about your company, what groups of people do you think about? Well, you know, I work with individual coaching clients. I work in community classes and with corporate teams. And with all of them, I use a strength-based embodied approach to help folks connect with themselves and access joy, reduce burnout, and build resilience. You know, especially during these times, I think we need it. I think we need all the hashtag partnership power we can get. <laughs> yes. They were doing that with their granddaughter um, because it's true. Just to allow people to be where they are and to meet them there and support from what they need. Yeah, I heard this. I heard something that, that we're in the middle of a paradigm shift with parenting. The, sh the shift from um, we're building a house and the house needs four windows and a door and a roof. And that's sort of how the parenting was before. Like, well, this is what a child should know and should be and should do right. to, this, um, to this planting a garden. Like, what does this child need? You know, what kind of light, where do they need to be planted? What kind of support do they need? And it seems like that the self-compassion piece has, you know, really helped me with that too. Shifting again from what should I be doing? What's the right thing to do? Like, mm -hmm. what is a good person? You know, what is it like to be a good mom? How do I be a good therapist? Mm -hmm. And instead saying, um, and this comes back to the, the imaginal cells. Have you heard of those inside no. caterpillars? No, imaginal cells. Imaginal. Isn't that such a okay. great name? Yeah, so what do they have imaginal cells? And those okay. are the cells that have the blueprint of the butterfly they're going to become. So mm -hmm. these cells, you know, there's cells for the wings and um, cells for the other parts of a butterfly, whatever those are. Right. Um, and um, and so thinking of, you know, that we have this blueprint inside of us. And yeah. so if, if I, you know, excavate inside myself and figure out, listen deeply to myself and think, what are my values? They, they're going to be different answers from yours and different from Christine's. And a lot of us, you know, arrive in adulthood with a set of values that are more cultural or familial. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to realize, wait a minute, are those even my values? You know, is that really? And been so yeah. that's when that, right. That's when that yeah. tuning in and that listening in and having that, you know, a supportive community that gives, helps us find the space to listen to ourselves. Yeah. Um, cause be, because we have this blueprint inside of us and it's just a matter of clearing out the noise right. and, getting still enough so that we can listen in to our imaginal selves so that we know, you know, what lights my soul on fire? What is Absolutely. my purpose? What are my values? Yeah. And just figuring out how to get those answers inside of ourselves. 
And for me, I'm thinking about the chapter, and I'm writing two chapters for volume two, right? And one of them is about this continuous workflow that no matter which department, whether it's finance or your product or your service that you're working on, this is what you do, right? And the first part is the plan. And the second part is to communicate. And still to Christine's question, because I think it's a great question of how do you stop and create the space for you to establish that inner authority? For me, it's the, okay, like you said, Diane, I woke up and I'm kind of feeling sad. I'm kind of feeling, I have an emotion. I lean in volume two is talking about emotions, right? This emotion came up. Why am I upset? Mm -hmm. And then it's my responsibility to communicate it. When we're talking about our group and the people that we have to work with, now that's the question, right? How is it received when we communicate it? Do we have the verbiage? Have we taken the time within ourselves to sit with it, to soften and have grace with ourselves? Self-compassion, but say, hey, I'm sad about this. Hey, Mm -hmm. this hurt my feeling or I'm upset. And now when you communicate it, what happens? Right. For me and my work environments, it wasn't always received. So I said, hey, I don't feel like I'm able to give honest feedback when that wasn't Mm -hmm. taken and physically dangerous situations are still happening. I chose to now I have to remove myself because I've tried to communicate. And in my inner authority, I want to be a great communicator as a manager. I want to make sure the other women and other team members are safe. If I cannot do that for myself, I do not feel like my inner authority is going to be listened to in the team. So I have to remove myself. Mm -hmm. And that is how I kept my inner peace, even though I might have loved my position and loved what I did. If it's going to go against that and I was taking away my inner peace and what I need to stay grounded, like you said, then I need to keep going. Yeah. 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 And I do that with everything, you know, personal relationships and my group now is amazing at receiving Mm -hmm. feedback because stuff is going to happen. You know, when you have two different people and, you know, our teams are bigger than two, usually you put a couple of personalities in, there's going to be things to to work through, to get, to get used to, to learn from each other and to learn about each other. Mm -hmm. Um, But for me, that's what's made it really easy to stay in that grounded place with Women Connected in Wisdom, with Shalo Glow, my my Shea Butter Company. And that's part of how I ground myself, right? Coming back to my body every day and seeing, okay, after the day happened, this is what you need to heal. This is where you are. And this is how you're going to set yourself up for the next day. And so that's been working out really well. And I think as women, when we get those, those cultural messages, you know, whether it's for me, I think the combination of being a girl and a highly sensitive person, um, yes. and, and everybody's going to have their own unique, you know, family generational trauma and, and family story. Stuff. Yeah. Cultural. Um, but when we are getting those messages of, um, oh, no, you know, oh, don't, re- no, you're overreacting. Don't be so sensitive, you know. Right. Um, and so then it's very confusing to know how to listen to our inner answers because we're getting this external feedback of your inner answers are wrong. You know, the the way you're expressing your feelings is not appropriate, is not welcome here. So then we have a lot of layers that are, that we, you know, have built up a lot of protective shell that is like, I don't even know how to know what I'm feeling because I blocked it out because I was discouraged from expressing it. And so there's a lot of feeling back that we have to do with that. So I love what you were, you were describing that experience of like, I kept having this, you know, this doesn't feel right to me. And that's how we, you know, and, and sort of noticing this doesn't feel right to me, but then I have a part that comes in and says, oh, but you're, maybe you're making too big of a deal or maybe right. this. And that's right. where that quietness and that self-compassion practice helps us say, if it doesn't feel right to me, that's important information. And that's how can I is. be with that? Even if I'm not ready to express it out yet, how can I be with it in a way that's compassionate and bring that presence to that? And honoring to everybody. And and I love that you said that because that is where I sift it. Right. And I don't I don't think I knew what sifting was before I was a kitchen manager and we had flour on the cook line. Right. And, you know, we sifted to make sure that it's the best breading for our fried items. And that's how I take information, you know. And so I can see with you saying that that sometimes it might be, well, I felt like a bad person, but no, this person is a bad person. Well, Mm -hmm. that's not necessarily the case. Right. Maybe they're either responsible for giving you that feedback because they're going to stay in the conversation with you or that's how they feel about it. Maybe it's coming from a place of love, whatever it is. Right. But now what I do is now I sift it. Maybe my expectations were wrong. Maybe maybe mm-hmm. I needed that piece of feedback to grow on the perspective. Maybe I was immature or naive and they just helped me grow. But if it's not that and I was right because I sat with it and thought about it before I brought it to that person, then mm-hmm. I can sift it and say, I appreciate you having this conversation with me. This is still how I feel in this mm-hmm. situation. Let's say for work, I, I still feel unsafe. I don't from the habit see that it's going to change and that because mm-hmm. of that, this is the, my, my next step. 
And yeah. so I hear what you're saying. Yeah. And sifting it has made it so much easier and to still be able to keep this relationship, build on this relationship if it's necessary, right? Or leave it with respect and not burning bridges and not taking myself out of the character that I um, choose to operate in when I tune myself and, you know, as we go on through with the projects and the character that we want to carry on in every day. One of the practices I love for what you're talking about is um, an, another energy practice that I do because there's, we did grounding and we yes. did clearing. And the third piece for me is protecting my energy. Mm. So like when I go into a, being a highly sensitive person, going into a shopping mall, it's yes. like 10 minutes in and I'm like melting with total exhaustion. Um, and so just thinking about, you know, can I imagine myself surrounded with you know, sometimes what I'll do is I'll breathe in and sort of imagine like a ball of light here. That's my own energy, my heart light. And I'll breathe it out so that it's all around me. And then imagine like a veil coming down over it and just saying, you know, may any, everything that's for, you know, for my good come through and anything that's other people's energy may it bounce off um, with love back to them. But sometimes I'll also picture it like I'm a disco ball and I'm outward facing mirrors all over. And I'll say, you know, anything that comes towards me, that's not for my highest good, or that's not unconditional love, may it bounce right off my disco ball, yeah. mirror it back to that person for their personal growth, you yes. know, right back yes. to you. It's bouncing off of me because that it's hard, you know, right. When I'm trained to be like a yes. pleaser and I'm like, Oh, it's scary, yes. you know, negative feedback or to be in conflict. And so I hear I like, you. I, like I love out. that disco ball. Yeah. I love, and I love the thought of dancing with it. Right. Yes. What I often use, Diane, is I use I imagine stepping into a hula hoop and lifting that up like a giant bubble over my head. Um, uh, I have a picture like from it. years ago that was an app that showed me dancing in a bubble, like it looked like a so so I like I sometimes I have trouble visualizing things. So that helps me to visualize. The disco ball helps me to visualize. I like that. Thank you yeah. for that tool. That is yeah. fabulous. The other thing that I, I think is a part for me of tuning into myself is that it just brings more magic. And so, I, yeah, I loved how you said, Shannon, like asking for what you want. And I was thinking yeah. of that not just with, you know, being able to narrate an amazing doc nature documentary, but also right. each day sort of asking, like, what do I want to receive from yeah. the universe, from nature, yes. from not just from people, but just energetically. Mm -hmm. And so I had a really difficult day recently that I was anticipating. I knew it was going to be a hard day. Yeah. And so I asked, um, my mom is in spirit, not here on this earth anymore. So I asked her to send me rainbows so that I would know that she and, and, you know, my angels and guides were with me. Yes. And, um, so I, I wasn't sure, you know, I was open to like a rainbow decal or so my niece, I saw my niece that morning and she had a little, um, thing on her crock, you know, those little, like yes, the little things they put in the little holes. Yeah. yeah. That was my first rainbow. And then throughout the day, there was a beautiful rainbow in Athens, Georgia that day. And like three different people sent me a picture of it. Mm -hmm. And then, um, there were a, another friend sent me a picture of a rainbow in Baltimore and it was just like an explosion of love and support, you know, for my mom and the universe. So that kind of magic, I just think there's more space for that. And another example is, um, I was, having a really busy day in the middle of the pandemic, there were so many people seeking therapy during that time. So I was, you know, back to back often for days in a row and not, not listening very much to my own inner knowing telling me you're working too much. And so I woke up one morning and the power was out on the whole Island and the news was, you know, the word on the Island was that it was going to be out all day. So speaking of, you were telling that story earlier, Christine, about the power being out, you know, when it's a small town, it yes. can be the whole town. So I canceled all of my clients and then the power immediately came back on. And so in the past, I might've been like, oh, I'm, I'm such a, you know, I feel guilty because I disappointed my clients or I, I need the money, you know, kind of that scarcity mindset. But I was yes. like, look at this. I've just been given a free day. Yes. So I, I took my white Husky Noko out for a walk and there was a woman across the street that I'd never seen before walking her white Husky. So uh -huh. I'm, I tend to be shy and not usually chatty on my dog walks, but I was like, you know, this is kind of a magical day. So I'm just going to go say hi. And she was wearing this shirt that said, trust your journey. And we struck up a conversation and she was um, a former therapist who, you know, was immediately started sharing about her spiritual journey. And yeah. we just had this amazing magical connection. And it was that feeling of like, 
the universe shut down the power on the whole island to give me a day off and a chance to connect with this beautiful other soul on my walk. So yeah. that kind of um, that kind of joy, you know, is a part of I think this like tuning into ourselves and connecting to our inner landscape and noticing when we're sad and tending to that. So there's more room yeah. for joy. And round of applause for you for not calling everybody back and <laughs> refilling up your schedule. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's talk some truth there because you know it went through all of our minds. Like we were like, do you do that? Do you not do that? Proud of you, Diane, for going for that walk. <laughs> right? Yes. yes. Yeah. I think that's this lens of like looking at like, okay, here's an obstacle. Is there any magic here? You know, like what is my inner knowing telling me? What do I need? How can I navigate this? And just having that deeper connection with myself. Uh-huh. And it's like, what is sometimes for me, a, a question that I use to sift it to is, is it an obstacle, right? Sometimes mm-hmm. it doesn't even even touch us. Like for example, in traffic, a lot of people have road rage and mad mm-hmm. at this person, mad at that person. But if you were just calmly going at the speed limit a little bit before it and, and were paying attention to everything, would it actually matter what they did? Or are you just upset it and talking about it? You know, and a lot of times mm-hmm. life can be like that too. You know, okay, this this is a huge situation. It's brought to your attention, but does it actually affect your life? You know, if it does, could it benefit you? What if it's if it's different? You know, especially mm-hmm. because I believe that everything happens for our good. And when you talk about the way that things fall together, I used to say, oh, that's crazy, right? What is a, the likelihood that she has a white husky? This is her mm-hmm. shirt. And because it's so specific, especially when you ask for things like the rainbows, that's when I started saying it's strategically orchestrated, Mm -hmm. right? And that's where I am with spiritual wellness. Nothing is by mistake. You know, everything Mm -hmm. is strategically orchestrated for your good. And it's even those conversations sometimes that I've had that have been difficult with people who we might not end up on the same um, page at the end of the conversation and might've ended up on different teams after that. I -hmm. still think that was for our good, you know? So totally. Lately, I've been thinking of it like um, if I want to strengthen my, you know, muscles, then I take myself to the gym and lift some weights. And so when I have a hard conversation, I try to think like I like the phrase, how could this be for me happening for me instead Mm. of to me? Yes. Mm. And um, so I think like, all right, I'm taking myself to the gym for my, you know, conflict resolution skills or for my (laughs) struggle skills or, you know, whatever it is. I'm just like, this is a chance to practice. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. And what's really interesting to me, especially with a degree in psychology, and I've thought, how am I going to, well, not that I've thought, how am I going to use it? That's what people ask. I see how I've used it in every position I've been in, right? Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you sharing how sitting in that chair, you struggled with feeling like you were stopping people from trusting their inner authority. You know what I mean? And I could Mm -hmm. see how that might be a practice in that, in that career field. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the work that you've done for yourself and sharing what works now so that, you know, people can have a beautiful spiritual journey, but also say, hey, you as that person in that journey, you have spiritual authority. You were given, you know, the the gifts that you were given for a reason, and they are not supposed to be second to everybody else that just so happens to be in your life because that's for your good. So you are first and then they're all complementary to that journey. Yeah, I'm I'm just a consultant and I can tell you what I know about mental health and then you tell me what you know about you. Yeah. And you know, you're the expert on you. So I'm here to listen and create space for whatever's trapped inside of you that's ready to come out. Absolutely. So when you think about your journey and what you're doing specifically this week in spiritual wellness, for your is wisdom and action, what are you working on? Um, I would say this week I am working on self-expression. So the more I listen into my inner knowing, I'm practicing how do I get it from my heart out into the world with as much compassion and connection with others as possible. Self-expression. Oh, I love that, Diane. Hashtag self-expression. Yes. What about you, Christine? What are you working on this week? I, you know, one of the phrases that Diane, you said early on in the podcast was listen to your inner knowing. So I think I'm going to go hashtag listen to your inner knowing for my wisdom in action this week, because you said it earlier, how we have these practices, we have these tools, and sometimes we're in the midst of big stuff, we forget, or we don't. So just really starting the day with that and starting the day with the listen to your inner knowing. What about you, Shannon? 
I, I'm along the same line, right? Earlier I said, ask, um, ask for what you need. I think mine is along the same line as yours, as yours though. And listen in, right? I think that I've been doing a great job at listening to the inner knowing. It's something I've worked on for a long time. And especially because of the way that my businesses are set up, that's my goal for all of the audiences that I work with. And so I think it's been something that has been good. And it's a question for me now in my spiritual wellness, am I listening to myself too much or am I listening to what God wants me to do and making sure that I'm in alignment, you know? So listen in to both God, to the the women around me and my authors, my teams that I'm working on to make sure I'm in alignment and not, um, creating too much space for the authority. I think that's important for my authority. I think that's important too, for it to be balanced and healthy, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think I'm doing good, but I am intentionally making sure that I listen in and doing my devotion and giving that time at the beginning of the day so I can be quiet and be in tune the correct way. Mm, I love it. Diane, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your knowledge and your wisdom about spiritual wellness with our audience. If folks want to get in touch with you, want to learn more about what you do, is the best way for them to check out AtlantaSelfCompassion.com? Oh, yeah, they can. They can also email me and it's just Diane at AtlantaSelfCompassion.com. But you can, if you reach out to me through the website, that'll get to me too. And we'll put that in our show notes for our listeners if they want to check that out. And uh, we put a link in our show notes directly to that daily meditation that you mentioned too. So thank you so much for being with us. We are grateful to be connected and we look forward to talking more. Yeah. Thank you both for having me. I love this wellness emphasis that you're putting out into the world. So thank Thank you for all the good work you're doing. Absolutely. You too. Oh my goodness. Mm. Yes. So important. Woo. I yes. think that energy clearing that she did at the beginning, like I'm still feeling relaxed after that. I do feel good. And I had been mm-hmm. wanting to. I had just told Vero, I need some more Pali Santo. I need to like let it go, <laughs> you know? So it's, it was great. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it also makes me, as much as I love doing it in my imagination and how helpful it was. <laughs> It also makes me want to go up to North Georgia and find a waterfall to stand under too. I'm definitely maybe doing that's it. how we yeah. reward ourselves <laughs> after after the books turned in, right? Ooh, we that would be that. a good reward. Go clean all the deadlines off. I love yeah. that. And I mean, I try to really do it all the time. You know, just like every day when I come back and I refresh myself, I'm putting on Shalo Glow because I can't sleep if I'm dry, right? I'm putting it on. I'm letting go of all of that stuff. I genuinely, I'm not trying to hold grudges. I'm not trying to hold anybody longer than they're supposed to be held in this conversation or this season. And again, the root of it is also, I'm not trying to get sick. That's where I believe Mm -hmm. chronic illness and stress and we're not doing that. So we're going to let it go. But Mm -hmm. we could definitely go to a waterfall. I'm down to chasing right. waterfalls with you. Yeah. Wouldn't I, oh, you know, that's one of my favorite hobbies is chasing yeah. waterfalls. Especially so, reading your chapter about the the nature and stuff. I can't wait for this right? book to come out. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be so fun. All right, my friend, anything our listeners need to know before we close uh, episode 122? Is there anything that we need to share? Upcoming, if you're listening live, um, yes. Women Connected and Wisdom will be in South Carolina, in Columbia, South Carolina, this Saturday. And at All Good Books. And um, we have a group of authors that are going to be there signing books and telling some wellness stories. And we'd love to meet you in person. And uh, anything else? Yes. And that's at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Eastern. At 6 p.m. So yep. come join us. Yes. We've come been having join us. Right. And check out womenconnectedandwisdom.com. Find out what we're up to and what's going on. And we'd love to stay connected with you. Yes, yes. And again, thank you so much for joining us. In the meantime, don't forget, be well, be wise, and be whole. We'll see you soon. Peace. Thanks for listening. This has been the Women Connected in Wisdom podcast. On air live on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern via Facebook and YouTube. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Be part of the conversation and get connected at womenconnectedinwisdom.com.